Hey everyone, it's Kino here. Thanks for joining me on this Ashtanga Yoga second series journey. This class is all about the leg behind the head poses, that crescendo of the deep spinal flexion that allows you to get your legs behind your head in a deep external rotation. Let's have some fun on this journey. Close your eyes, come to a comfortable seated position. Gently let your hands rest down. So the journey of opening the hips begins all the way back in the primary series and really builds to that crescendo of primary series, Supta Kurmasana, where with the teacher's assist, you can end up with both legs behind your head after many, many years of practice. As you move into the intermediate series, we start off with putting your own legs behind your head through a deep external rotation of the hip joints. When you begin to move into these poses, you've just finished and transitioned out of the back bends of the intermediate series, which bring the energy up the spine. As you're looking at placing both legs behind your head, you're starting off by flexing the spine and rotating the pelvis under, which gives space to the hip joints to externally rotate. Then your energy can travel up the spine, and as your leg eventually presses behind your neck or behind the head, you press back up into it, and then a little bit like downward pressure, as soon as that downward pressure is released, energy travels up the spine and really expands outward. So this is something that really makes a big change in how you inhabit the space of the body because as the hips open, you go through a process of deep intimacy with all of those empty spaces inside of the pelvis. Inside of the pelvis and inside of the hips, you often find a reservoir of deep-seated emotions. So sometimes the emotional journey of opening the hips is as intense as the physical journey. You can't rush it. So if the hips aren't open, you have to simply accept, remain equanimous, and just wait for your hips to gently, calmly open. We'll start off with Ekapadashir Shasana, one foot behind the head. And in order to prepare for Ekapadashir Shasana, we're gonna use the pigeon pose to simply allow the movement to really get opened deep inside of the hip joints. So I want you to come to a cross-legged position and then just be aware of the external rotation of the hip joints. Then let's bring the feet together and then just drop the knees in towards each other. So this basic movement of your knees pointing out to the side and then your knees pointing back together. That's pretty much what we're looking for in the hip joints, just getting a little bit more roll deep in the ball and socket of the hip joint. So let's start off in downward facing dog. So here you are in downward facing dog, five breaths just to tune in. Since we'll be moving into the pigeon pose, if you're not in a warm environment, you may want to move in through some sun salutations, just to bring a little bit of heat into the body. But if you feel warm already, after one downward facing dog, we can pop right forward to pigeon. So let's slide your right knee forward, closing the knee joint and settling your hips back. As you begin to move into the pigeon pose, this is uh, uh, the usage of pigeon pose to really get that external rotation for the half lotus or the lotus position. Since we're working on getting the legs behind the head, we have to do the open pigeon pose. So let's glide your right knee a little to the side, shin bone parallel with the front of the mat, and then lean over to the side so you can aim the right, the front of the right hip towards the ground. And then let's come down onto your forearms and all the way down and keeping your left leg active start to push your left hip towards the ground reach back with your right hand and see if you can get the right hip off the ground and move it back we'll stay here for a few breaths activating your left leg making this a little bit of an activated pigeon pointing through all the toes so right toes and left toes point keep that action of your right femur moving back Hold it here for a moment, keep the belly in, lift your belly away from the floor, lean over to the left a little bit, and then relax it. Slowly lift the head up, come up onto your hands and knees, and inhale, come forward to the plank pose, and exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. From downward facing, let's slide your left knee forward again, settle the hips back, and then again, move your left knee out to the side, shin bone parallel with the front of the mat, send your hips back, keeping the belly in, point the feet, and then exhale, settle your chest down as far as you can. You could rest on the elbows or all the way down. Then let's activate the pigeon, activating Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha, tucking your tailbone, activating the right leg, reach back with your left hand to the left hip, and pull the left hip back. 
Stay here for a little bit. So this is not a passive stretch, but an activated pigeon that prepares you for putting your leg behind the head, both in terms of strength and flexibility. Sometimes we focus too much on the flexibility, not enough on the strength. So really find your way into accessing the conscious control that will bring you deeply into the body. Hold it here for a moment. Belly sucks in. And exhale, release. Keeping the pelvic floor turned on. Come on up and let's step it back to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Now, slowly come forward into a seated position. We're going to begin by breaking down the movements of Ekapada Shirshasana. We're going to begin by breaking down the movements of Ekapada Shirshasana. So it's traditionally advised that you jump around into a prepare position. This prepare position is sometimes known as the elephant trunk pose. So you're going to think about jumping into sort of a one leg up and another leg in sort of a lift up, almost like half an L sit and half the leg wrapped around the arm. So grab the right calf muscle and place it on top of the right shoulder and let's just prepare this lift up. Lean your shoulders forward and then just like the L sit, drag Drag the hips back. Then slowly extend the legs and let's just hold that there for a moment and exhale down. Dropping the knee out, relax it for a moment. This is the position that we're trying to jump into when we're looking at a Kapadashirshasana. So from downward facing dog, you jump forward and up keeping the right leg out to the side and aim your calf muscle towards the right tricep. Let's try that from downward facing dog. So here we go in downward facing dog. The most kind of basic version of this is to keep it low and then inhale, jump forward and hold. Now your leg is already kind of up and in position. So that's the jump forward. If the jump forward didn't happen, jump to the best of your ability and you can stack the leg up and then Give one little lift, maybe both, and then down. Now, to come into Ekapadashirshasana, hold on to your knee and then drop the knee out to the side. So it's this knee side position that's really crucial in Ekapadashirshasana. So we're thinking about knee dropping and spiraling out to the side. That outward spiral is important. Let's hold the foot up, keep the pelvis rotated under and the spine strong and pulled in. Now the trick to getting into Ekapada Shishasana is to allow your femur to spiral around, around, so really watch knee to the side. If your knee points back, you're gonna be blocking the external rotation, okay? Then lift the foot up and then gently drop the shoulder in front. You could even turn your head to the side, bring the head down and around, and then start to wiggle. Wiggle the shoulder forward, wiggle the head. You could pull your hair, you could pull the hair out of the way lifting the head up and just wiggle around. Now, use the neck to press back and keep pulling down your back, making space by bringing your torso through your thighs. Making space by bringing your torso through your thighs. Then, keeping the chest nice and stable, hands in prayer. If you have a hard time holding the feet, the foot up with your head, then you could press with your hands onto your chin, and you're thinking about bending your knee, so with the strength of your leg, you're pulling down. Then to go forward, you could start off on your elbows and hold the head up from here. Then you can reach all the way down, pressing your chin to the shin, and you don't want to give all of your weight down. Keep thinking about pushing back. And you could even, and you could even stay there for a moment as the belly draws in, gaze towards the left toes, calm the mind. Settle in. Avoid hiking your hips. And at the same time, squeeze the right knee close to the body. Gaze forward towards the toes. Walk it back up. Now when it's time to jump back, this is the place where things get kind of interesting. So here we are, leaning forward. So here we are, back oriented towards the front of the mat. You have to find yourself in a roll. So your pelvis rolls under. Hold that for a moment and then just glide your hands into each other. So this position of the spine is what you're gonna lift up into, keeping the belly drawn in, hold it for a moment. Then we'll do this lift up side as easy as possible and then maybe make it a little harder on the next one. Bend your knee, lean forward, bringing that left knee into your chest and then slowly up. 
bend the knee, release, and this is very important, don't touch your toes down. Bring your left foot back, right foot back, and the easiest way to jump back, bring your chest down, extend the left leg, then the right leg, and then exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. Okay, let's try the left side. So we're gonna jump around into the elephant trunk pose. Switch your gaze forward. You could do it in the same way, keeping the hips low. Or if you wanna jump a little higher, you can jump a little higher. Inhale, belly sucks in. If you jump a little higher, you're gonna jump into the shoulders, round the back, and keep the pelvis lifted as you drop down. Then, picking up the foot, slowly find that external rotation. So you're gonna find your hip and spiral the hip back and down. As your hip moves back and down, this allows you to rotate the pelvis under. Keep your sitting bones pointed towards each other. Your mind is calm, knee out to the side. Then, pick the foot up from underneath, bringing it towards your head. Keep the mind calm. Don't force it. If this is as far as you get to, this is as far as you get to. Don't bring the head down. Keep your head in position and drop only from the neck. All right, so you're not trying to bring your torso under. You're just dropping and pivoting from the head. Bring the shoulder out and you're gonna push the knee towards your foot. So think about talking on the phone and bring the foot towards your, towards your ear. Drop the head down, reach around the back, hold your foot and then start to wiggle. Shoulder forward, wiggle, wiggle, pull, wiggle, pull. So think about what's happening in your hip. So your hip is spiraling around, so that's that spiral, and at the same time, it's going deeper into the socket. Hold it there, get everything in position. Head moves back at the last to hold, and your foot pointed and your hip engaged. So you wanna engage the body, then belly in, Lean forward, try to avoid leading too much back, sitting bones towards each other. Then when it's time to fold forward, strengthen the right leg, you can walk it down. If you need to stay halfway down and push up on your head, all good. If you can fold all the way forward, then easy fold. Keep the belly in, gaze forward towards the toes, avoid dropping the head down and keep bending the left knee, squeezing the left knee onto the body. And then after five breaths, walk it back up. So I thought I'd show you the more difficult position. Let's just practice that for a moment. Bring your leg up, taking the hands together, holding yourself up. Then the way to lift up, this time with your legs straight, pivot forward and inhale, send the pelvis forward and then bend the knees. This time, both legs at the same time, jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Now, jump all the way through to seated. Keep the belly in and down. Now to prepare for Dwipada Shirshasana, the diamond pose, bend your knees, drop it out to the side. So again, knees point to the side. Then find your pubic bone and then exhale. As you shift the pubic bone back, you can give a little wiggle on the way down and then slowly exhale down. Shift from the pubic bone, keep the belly in, and just like we activated the pigeon, you're going to activate this pose too. 